I'm working on a project looking at the relationship of um, maturity in stone fruit and uh, aromatic volatile compounds. So what we're trying to do is use a defined maturity by using the IAD index or the index of absorbance difference which the DA meter can give us and define um, levels of maturity at which aromatic compounds are come into play or they are removed from the mix. Um, so we profile the fruit. We're also looking at the effect of cold storage on those aromatic compounds and whether they're affected by, um, or by cold storage and whether they um, are lost or gained during that process. The aromatic compounds we associate with the smell of the fruit and that's also associated with the flavour when we eat them. So they're very important in consumer selection criteria as well. If we can define fruit cultivars or, or um, protocols that can assist in the fruit getting to the export markets in a more than um, appropriate or adequate condition, then obviously that's much better for the producer. If we know that that fruit is not going to survive that process or is going to be affected by that process, um, then at least the producers can decide what to do with that fruit more appropriately, whether they just send it straight to a domestic market or, or stop growing it. Okay, so for the profile of maturity from immature to overripe fruit, we've managed to, to look at two peaches and one nectarine so far. There's still other cultivars that have been processed. Obviously there's a point in there that those compounds become important. So being able to define that point at which growers can make sure they pick their fruit after that point happens will, will ensure that that compound is still available after harvest. So the trend is looking at whether the um, volatile is picked up in any level of concentration that improves or reduces during that time frame from immature to overripe. So in some cases it'll drop and then reappear as the fruit moves into senescence. In other cases it'll drop completely and in some it'll only come in after the fruit has hit onset of ethylene. So um, obviously there's a factor there that ensures that the volatile comes into play. So if you can, if you can make sure that that happens in those cases that you've picked the fruit after that onset of ethylene which in some cases makes it much harder to store the fruit. Well, we're hoping to use it to improve um, the export facility so that we know if the fruit is at those stages, how it's going to interact with cold storage and therefore export um, conditions or storage conditions for even domestic market. Um, we're, we're looking at whether, those, uh, whether cold storage has an effect over a prolonged period, so up to four weeks. We're also looking at the effect of once it's removed from cold storage, the um, what bring it back to warm, like room temperature, where it's in the marketplace at a consumer level. Whether that has a positive or negative effect on those compounds as well. So in some cases, it disappears uh, um, during cold storage, but is recovered during that marketing point. In others, it disappears completely and in others it doesn't appear until those points. So it's um, a very big interplay of compounds. Hey, I'm Christine Frasina and I work at the AgriBio Centre in Bandura for Agriculture Victoria.